Why is the neutral wire thinner than the phase wire in three-phase cables? This question might seem peculiar, but it's one that holds a lot of interest in the realm of electrical engineering. Welcome back to Electrology, where we delve into the captivating world of electrical wonders. Firstly, a quick refresher on three-phase power. This system distributes electrical power using three live wires, often known as phase wires. These wires are labeled red, yellow, and blue, or in short, R, Y, and B. What's intriguing about these phases is that they are typically 120 degrees apart in their electrical waveform. Now, let's talk about the neutral wire. It's an integral part of a three-phase system, acting as a return path for the unbalanced current flowing through the system. When the loads on the three phases aren't equal, the neutral wire steps in. It carries the difference in current, ensuring the system remains balanced. Imagine a scenario where the loads on phases R, Y, and B are as follows. R has a load of 50 amperes at 0 degrees, Y has 60 amperes at 120 degrees, and B has 55 amperes at 240 degrees. To check for load balance, the currents are summed vectorically. This gives a result of 8.66 amperes at 150 degrees. Since the sum isn't zero, it indicates an imbalance in the system. In this case, the neutral current, representing the unbalanced portion of the system, is 8.66 amperes. This brings us back to the question of conductor size. When loads are nearly equal, the neutral current is minimal. Hence, a smaller conductor size for the neutral wire is sufficient. This approach aligns with the goals of efficiency and cost-effectiveness in electrical system design. But it's important to note that the sizing of conductors follows electrical codes and standards. One common guideline is to ensure that the neutral wire can safely carry the maximum unbalanced current expected during normal operating conditions without going beyond the allowable temperature limits. So, in essence, the decision to make the neutral wire thinner than the phase wires in a three-phase system is an outcome of careful engineering considerations. These considerations balance safety, efficiency, and cost-effectiveness. Understanding these principles, both conceptually and mathematically, is crucial for anyone working with or studying electrical systems. That wraps up our exploration of three-phase power for today. If you found this video informative, show your support with a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell for more exciting content. Until next time, keep your curiosity alive and continue exploring the world of electrical engineering with us here at Electrology.